Now we are going to look at resolution. We need to remind ourselves a few definitions. Remember the clauses. Clauses are set of literals L1 to Ln and interpreted as the disjunction of the literals. A small notation. Uh, if you have a clause C and a literal L, L union C means you put L in C and then take the union. Furthermore, we recall the definition CNF. Okay. In the CNF, you have conjunction of clauses. Remember the derivation starting from CNF. Okay. We assume that we have a set of formulas in left hand side, which was treated as conjunction of the formulas. Right? So uh, this guy is a conjunction of formulas, one way of looking at it. And then we say, is it derive F? Yeah, that's, that was the derivation statement. So conjunction of CNF formula is also a CNF formula. So if each individual formula in here is in CNF, then we can say this whole thing is a, is a CNF. Remember the derivations. Okay? Let's suppose we are starting from CNF formulas, not arbitrary formulas. So how many rules do we need? An answer is we only need two rules. One rule is assumption, which cannot go anywhere. It basically introduces the statement, basically says that if you have a clause, you can introduce it. Okay? And the second rule you need is resolution. That was a derived rule in our proof system earlier, but we can consider it as a fundamental rule right now here. So sigma proves f or g, we can, and the sigma proves not f or h, then you can derive g or h. Okay? So this is resolution. And you don't need anything else. These two are sufficient to reason about all formulas in CNN. But typically sigma is clear from the context why that is the case because in the case of our earlier proof system there were some rules which are pulling things from the left hand side and we are sometimes introducing things on the left hand side to really make the reasoning work but in this case when resolution system starts it doesn't play with sigma it, sigma is always fixed when you are, are doing the uh, derivation so we may not write it again and again on the left hand side so usually the resolution is written like this okay so where you say p or c and not p or d are given to you these are called clauses antecedents and uh, the resolution is c or d so this is called resolvent okay and this variable p where you expect p and not p both occur in the clauses respectively then that is called pivot variable if you have a two clauses available to you and you want to do resolution between them and obtain a new clause you need to choose the pivot variable now the question is is it possible that you have more than one choices to choose from so let's look at an example when it is possible and uh, we will see it is it is a non-problem consider this clause p or q or r and not q or dot q or r you can resolve on variable p and you get this clause or on resolve on q between the same two clauses and you obtain p or not p or r so you have to make a choice one thing to notice something is absurd has happened these clauses have both q and not q if that is the case then this clause is trivially true clause and it can't contribute in deriving everything anything okay Therefore, if you have a situation when you have to make a choice which pivot to use, that means that derivation is useless. It is going to produce true clauses which is useless for future reasoning. Therefore, the resolution, whenever applicable, will give you a unique pivot by just looking at the clauses. Okay? There will be exactly one literal which negation will be setting in the other clause and then you do the resolution. Now how the resolution proof method works, okay? Resolution proof method takes a set of clauses sigma and produces a forest of clauses as a proof, okay? The clauses in the proof are either from sigma or consequence of previous clauses. A goal of the proof method is to find the empty clause, which stands for inconsistency. Okay? So this is different from the proof system we saw. This is a refutational proof system where you're looking for inconsistency rather than only deriving the true statement. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's suppose you have this formula F, okay, which has these four clauses. 
Now we will consider the context of our derivation to be sigma. So it has uh, four clauses in it. And then we will derive, apply resolution and we get new clauses. Okay. So if we apply, apply resolution between these two guys and then we will obtain Q. And then we pick another clause from our set, not Q or R. And then we derive R here. Okay. Now there's not R sitting here. I do the resolution with this guy and we get false. The goal is to get to the empty clause. So why we are getting an empty, uh, false symbol here? We see that R is a clause with, uh, which has a single literal and then there is a nothing else. And uh, here is another uh, clause which is also have a single literal. So when you get rid of the single literals, the what is extra thing left? Nothing. So you have empty clause at the end and empty clauses are interpreted as false. Therefore, instead of writing empty, we are writing false. It's just a conventional issue. This direction is called the depth of the resolution curve. So as we noted earlier that we never derive uh, false in our uh, proof system earlier and we used to derive formulas from the sigma and there was no false symbols in our system, proof system. Okay. So how that makes sense? Okay. How does it uh, prove in, in, the, in the sense of the original proof system? It is actually you we could derive in our proof system f and not f which, which is which stood for unsatisfiability in that proof system and or you can simply say have explicit symbol false okay so in the lot of proof system they don't have explicit false symbols and they simply say when you derive f and not f together then it's then then only you have false remember that there was a time point in our proof system we had this r and not r derived so what you can do instead of applying the last step we apply this derivation and we obtain not r and r and then we are done we are we are proving false in the sense of the our original proof system so we can easily show that if your resolution a proof generates false then sigma is unsatisfied let us suppose we are asked to derive sigma proofs f Sigma proves F means uh, Sigma implies F or you can say Sigma implies F is a valid formula. Okay? Resolution proof proceeds by proving false. But this is gel well to the, what is going on here and what is the resolution proof system. That is obtained by uh, a trick. Okay? So let's see what the trick is. Let's just assume Sigma is a finite. Okay? We will relax this by the next lecture, this structure. We will construct a formula, the conjunction of sigma and negation f. Then we translate uh, this uh, formula into a set of clauses, sigma prime, and we apply the resolution proof method on sigma prime. Since this is a negation of sigma uh, implies f, then we can simply say that this, is, this should be unsatisfiable if this implication was a valid application. If we apply the resolution and if we derive false in our resolution proof system, then sigma proofs f is derivable. So we have seen this above proof steps which are basically uh, informally written. And what if you really want to be convinced, you need to translate each of these steps into uh, formal proof steps in our original derivation system which is possible so if you really want it and really want to be rigorous to please go ahead and do it